Hello class, Mr. Sutton here. Today we are going to be starting a new lesson on logarithms. The next few lessons will be over logarithms. So before we can get into what a logarithm is, we need to go ahead and talk about inverses. Uh, if we remember talking about inverses before at the beginning of this semester, it says the definition of an inverse is to switch the input x and the output y. Remember when we were finding inverses, we switched our x's and our y's and then we solved for y. So let's find the inverse of this exponential function y equals two to the x power. Remember when we talked about exponential functions, this was the parent function we used. So here we have our exponential function and then we have our table of values over here. So if I plug in negative two, and to x right there the outcome is one fourth you can try all of these on your calculator this is the table you should get uh, if you want to find the inverse of that we take our table and we switch the x's and the y's so that's what we did over here that's what it would look like and we have this represented as graphs here below so this is what the exponential function as a graph looks like if you plotted these points you'd find they fall on that curved line and the inverse looks like this. If you plot at these points over here, you would find they all fall on that curved line there. So that is what the inverse of an exponential function looks like when we switch this x and this y here and then solve for the new y. So we have a definition for that down here. The name for the inverse function of an exponential function is a logarithm when we write the inverse as x equals 2 to the y power so it's x equals 2 to the y power this is not helpful to us because the y in this case is not isolated to write it as an equation with y isolated we have something called log form that allows us to rewrite exponential equations so what, what that means is, so after we've switched the variables, the y and the x, like we have here, so now we have x here and y here, uh, the next thing we would want to do is to solve y, solve for y, get y by itself, but we don't know any algebraic step that we can do that, okay? It's not like we can y root both sides, that wouldn't get y by itself, we can't divide anything. There's nothing we can do here to get this y by itself. So they created this new form, the log form, to rewrite this so that this y is by itself on one side of the equation. That way it is a proper function. So let's take a look down here. This will, help, will start to explain what that log form looks like. So again, we started with y equals 2 to the x power. The first thing we want to do to find the inverse is we switch our y and our x. So then we got to x equals 2 to the y power. Now again, we don't know any algebraic way to solve this for y, so we want to use this log form. And to write it in log form, again, the y is going to be by itself, once a equation. That's what we want in order for this to be a proper function. And then we use the word log. And then we write the base of our exponent down here. So two goes down here, right, uh, as a subscript next to the G. And then what was on the other side of the equation before, the X goes right here. So to go from this form to log form, again, your base goes down here as a subscript, just so we know that's base two. Uh, your exponent becomes your output of the function. So it's by itself on one side of the equation, which is what we want. And then our original answer this x by itself over here, becomes the argument of this log function. So we're taking the log base 2 of x. You might see parentheses around the x sometimes. Uh, and then we have a more general form over here. So up here we use 2. Here we're just using a. So given any base a, again, we switch our x and our y's. Uh, and then to write it in log form, we have log base a, our exponent, goes to one side of the equation by itself. And then what used to be our answer 
becomes our new argument for this log function. So this is log base a, and it's log base a of x equals y. Okay, so to convert between exponential form and inverse form, we use the following pattern. This is not taking the inverse, this is converting between the two forms. Now I think it's going to take some while to get used to this log form, but remember the important part is the exponent is by itself on one side of the equation. That's the reason we use this form. So that's a proper function so that our outputs are on this axis. Okay. So let's look at the next page where we have some practice problems converting between the two forms. So some more examples of what this looks like. Here is one that we're probably familiar with, five to some power equals 25. I think most of us will recognize that this is five squared equals 25, but we're just trying to convert to the other form. So the exponent, which is x, goes on one side of the equation. And this is going to be a log base five, right? Five is our base here, so log base five. And then our, what used to be our answer, becomes our argument. So log base 5 of 25 equals x. And this over here just kind of tells us how uh, our pieces of our equations move around as we're converting from log form to exponential form. So hopefully that will give you a better visualization of how these things move. But let's go ahead and look at example one. Again, we're not solving anything here. We're just converting to the other form. So here, these are all in exponential form. We are going to convert them to log form. So here, our base is five. Our exponent is four. So that four is going to be on one side of the equation by itself. And then we have log base five of 625. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and write that. So that's log base 5 of 625 equals 4, or the other, way around, the other way around 4 equals log base 5 of 625. Let's go ahead and take a look at B. This one has a negative exponent. Uh, so this negative 3 is going to be on one side of the equation. This is going to be a log base 4 of 1 over 64. I'm going to write that down. Uh, you don't necessarily need to add the parentheses here. But I'm just show, using those to be extra clear that this 1 over 64 is the argument and this 4 is just the base of the log. Okay. Similar to how we use parentheses when we're talking about f of x, this is log base 4 of 1 over 64. Here we have 81 to the 1 half power equals 9. Also, you can think of this as the square root of 81. Remember, 1 half as an exponent is the same as the square root. So this time we'll have 1 half by itself on one side of the equation. And the base of our log is 81, and the argument is 9. I'm going to go ahead and write that now. And here we have an example of just variables. This is x to the y power equals z. So log base x of z equals y. I'm going to write that now. So that is what that looks like. Now the next set of examples are going the other way. So we're going from log form to exponential form. Uh, so here we have log base 2 of 32 equals 5. So the exponent is always going to be this thing by itself on one side. And then the base of that is going to be this subscript. So 2 to the fifth power and then the other number goes on the other side. So 2 to the 5th power equals 32. Again, nothing to solve here. We're just writing in the other form. So our base here is 4. Our exponent is 1 half. And that's going to equal 2. Here the base is 2. The exponent is a negative 4. And then the outcome is 1 over 16 which makes sense. Remember, negative exponents give us inverted outputs. And then we have an example with just variables here. So x, and our exponent is z, should equal y. Okay. 
So now we want to look at the U tries, one through six. Go ahead and take a look at these six U tries. Go ahead and try these, pause the video, try all six of these and see if you can get the answers that I'm going to put up here. All right, pause the video now. These are the answers that I got. Now, what I will say about these is what I do if I'm confused about writing in log form or converting from log form to exponential form, I always think when it's in log form, that means the exponent is by itself on one side of the equation. So I know that this two is my exponent. And from there, I think the other numbers seem to fall into place. Okay, the base is 12, 12 squared is 144. If you're going the other way, six squared equals 36. So this two needs to go by itself on the equation and the, the uh, 6 is the base and the 36 becomes the argument. So always think when it's in log form the exponent is by itself on one side of the equation that is the point of writing things in log form. So let's go ahead and go back to notes. Here we're going to actually evaluate some logs and we're going to do these by hand. There's a way you can do these with a calculator, but we're going to be doing these by hand. So here we have three raised to some exponent that we don't know, and that's going to equal 27. Probably helpful to write this in exponential form, uh, just so we're clear on what this means, since we're probably not very familiar with this form yet. So this is where being familiar with some of your more common exponentials uh, comes in handy. 3 to the what power equals 27? Well, it's 3 to the third power equals 27. If you don't know these things off the top of your head, you uh, would be, uh, it would be useful for you to use a calculator and guess and check. 3 squared will give you 9. You multiply by another 3 and you get 27. Uh, so that's how you can come up with some of these. But there is no strict algebraic way to solve these. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at example four. Five to what power equals 25? Well, that's five squared will equal 25. Let's take a look at example five. For this one, remember when you raise a fraction to an exponent, you are raising both the numerator and the denominator to that exponent, which is why I put this in parentheses just so that's clear. So this one doesn't change. One to any power is just going to be one. But we got to think about two to what power gives us eight, and that's three. So this x right here equals three. Go ahead and take a look at example six. When I convert this to exponential form, I can see that from my base to my solution, it's inverted, right? I go from a fraction to just a whole number. So that is a clue that my exponent should be negative. Okay, I want to bring this 3 up here, so I need to make this exponent negative, and then I have to think about 3 to what power equals 9, that's 3 squared. All right, so 1 third to the negative 2 power will give me 9. Let's go ahead, take a look at example 7. Here, 6 to what power equals 6? Well, that's going to be to the first power. Raise anything to an exponent of 1, and your outcome will be the same. Let's take a look at example number 8. 8 to what power equals 1? Well, anything to the 0 power equals 1. So we should know that the exponent will be 0. Let's go ahead and take a look at number 9. Here we have to think about 2 to what power equals 8, and also 3 to what power equals 27. This should work for both of them. So x equals 3 in that case. 2 to the third power equals 8. 3 to the third power equals 27. Let's go ahead and take a look at our last example here before we finish off with the u tries. Here we have 4 to what power gives us a negative 16. This is undefined. There is no exponent I can raise 4 to to get a negative number. Uh, quickly, if we look at our log graph, we can see that if we have a negative input, there is no graph over here. So now go ahead and pause the video and try 7 through 12 on the U-tries. I will put the answers up in a moment. And here are the answers. If you have any questions over this, please come to my 
office hours or Ms. Clayles or Ms. Parsons. Have a good day.